and we are live. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. It's Victor the uh, Gimme Break Man, Gimme Flick Man. This is Gimme Flick Man channel, Gimme Break Man. I'm a little rusty, haven't been doing this for a while. This is a news video and it's going to be unedited, so yeah, it's unedited, so you know, I'm sure I'll misspeak, etc. And I'm going to link you to the article that I'm talking about today, as you can see in the headlines. Um, but this is just a, it's a good news article. And, you know, we rarely get these, so I think it's something we should celebrate. And uh, let me give you the summary. This man was walking in the Osaka, I think it's Osaka, I want to say the Osaka area, but no, it says Western Japan. And this news article comes, the news story that I'm linking here comes from Osaka, but actually this apparently happened in Yamaguchi, Hofu Yamaguchi Prefecture, which, we'll get a little map here so we can... You get an idea of where this is in Japan. Here's a map here. And here we go. Okay, so this is, yeah, this is this area here, right? Wow, it's all the way almost in Kyushu. Okay, now uh, those of you who know Japan a little bit, well, here, let's give you a big map. Tokyo, uh, t no, I'm sorry, Tokyo, Nagoya, Osaka. Hiroshima, and it's actually west of that. So it is way out west in the west there. Hofu, Yamaguchi, there we go. Yeah, in this, in this area here. And the weather there is not that um, hot and not that cold. It's about 24 to 34 degrees. Uh, I mean, 34 is kind of hot. But it gets down to 23, which is, you know, pretty still pretty warm. Anyway, the this old man was walking with his two-year-old, and uh, she... He, she, the kid says, I'm going to go back to the house, right? Or something like that. Anyway, the old man takes his eyes off the kid for two seconds. And next thing you know, kid's missing. Now, uh, those of you who watch this channel know that I've got a one-year-old and a three-year-old. And they are stubborn little things. Um, it's amazing. Uh, really, I mean, don't they know we could just kick their butts? But they, they, do want, they want to do whatever they want to do, right? Uh, so I understand the, the uh, obstinacy of, these, of, of children. Um, but I also know that one a one year old and a three year old and a two year old in this case, I mean that's 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 a little kid, right? Um, so the kid disappears. Long story short, now they're out in the country. It's not I don't know exactly what what uh, the country there looks like, but we can take a quick look. Here's Holfu, right? We don't know exactly where this happened. Oh, the north uh, there's an air defense uh, force down there. Okay, but uh, just to give you an idea, well, actually, you know, most of most of Japan looks all pretty much the same. It's all cookie cutter streets and stuff. Yeah, all of Japan kind of looks like this. We can assume, however, that it was more towards the mountains in the country um, because of the uh, because of what happened next, because the kid disappeared, and there was apparently a river nearby uh, as well, uh, which factors in. Is, is important later because the fact is in because that's where the kid goes to get water. So the kid disappears for three days and they've got like 140 people searching for him. Um, does that seem like, like a lot to you? I, I think in Japan when someone disappears and and uh, they, they sound out everybody. There was, a, there was a case a few months ago of a criminal disappearing and they literally had 900 people searching for this uh, convict, right? He escaped from jail. Anyway, in this case, 140. They even had the mother going going around on a loudspeaker uh, in the neighborhood, like uh, shouting out, "Please come home! Please come back!" Well, this gives you a better idea of what the area looks like. So, yeah, you know, uh, it's hard to tell, but some areas of Japan look pretty urban, and then some, yeah, some areas look like this. So it's possible that it was something like this, where it's half green and right on the edge. I, I have an idea. Uh, that it was probably somewhere like this. Okay, so anyway, what happens next is a pretty amazing uh, story. He disappears for three days. They pretty much lost hope. And then this guy appears. Now this guy is an old retired man. I think he's about 78 or something. And he came from Oita. And his name is Obata. And sorry about the lighting, by the way. He um, he says, you know, I'll find the kid. And, he, and 20 minutes later, he's, he's found the kid. So. He, they asked him, how did he do it? You know, he said, well, this happened to me a while ago. I, I, he's a volunteer, I'm sorry, he's like a professional volunteer. He's retired now, and he uses his pension to go around the country volunteering at disasters and stuff. Um, I've seen people like this before. I was in Brazil, like, about 30 years ago, and I remember um, meeting some international uh, volunteers, and that's all they did. They were funded by this by this rescue group, and they would travel to, to disaster areas around the world and, and help people out. They were professional, like, firemen and stuff. 
Uh, anyway, this guy does this on his own. Uh, he has his own. Uh, he has a pension now. And when, it, when you know the, you might have heard that in uh, Hiroshima, all the, a little bit uh, east of where, where this happened, there was um, there were some floods recently, and he went there to help out with uh, with the disaster there, the relief there, you know, whatever efforts uh, they needed. And he volunteered. He volunteered. So wherever people are needed, he goes. So he found out about this kid missing. So he went there from Oita. Now where is Oita? Let's get a little perspective here. Oita Prefecture. So you can see. And we'll look at that now. That's not too far, actually. It's kind of close. There's Oita over here. Oops. This is Oita in this area. And he went up here. So it's, it's about an... Well, he probably took the train or something. Who knows? Maybe he flew. But it's a couple hours away. Maybe three, uh, three hours away, four hours away. Not that far. But anyway, he went there and he said... They said, they asked him, you know, how did you do it? And he said, well, this happened to me a while ago in another volunteer situation where a little girl who was also two years old had disappeared and she had climbed up the mountain. So he just thought two-year-olds, you know, the way children think, he just assumed that this kid is going to be similar and just go the same direction. And he was right. 20, within 20 minutes, he had found the kid. So really uh, great news. Uh, it's rare that you, that you hear about things like this. You know, kid disappears for three days. Kid's dead, right? But not in this case. Uh, yeah, so that's great news. Anyway, and it's, a, and it's a really heartwarming story, and this guy's a hero now on the internet. Everyone's like, wow, this, is, this guy's great. So he says he's gotten so much, uh, he's, he's kind of, not excuse, but his, I guess his reason for living is that I've gotten so much from uh, my life that I want to give back now. So he uses his pension and travels around Japan helping people out, like a modern day superhero. And of course, the grandfather's relieved, and the kid—the kid's birthday was Monday, so he actually spent his second year, uh, his, his second birthday. He turned two in the woods by himself. Uh, experts say they probably ran like runoff. He drank runoff water, you know, uh, in in the woods, and, and that's how he survived. But he was extremely hungry, and they said they're going to give him a belated birthday uh, party with ice cream cake, which actually is what I promised my son next year: ice cream cake, because he loves ice cream. Um, but just a uh, just a really great story, and it makes you it makes you you know rethink your life a little bit, right? I mean, uh, it's, it's, and I, I don't want to be religious because I'm not I'm not religious, but I, one of the things that bothers me about religion, especially uh, Christianity, is the hypocrisy of it all. And I'm not trying to you know be condescending about this, but I, I feel like that if you're gonna if you're gonna walk if you're gonna talk the talk, then you should walk the walk. And, and one of those, one of the things uh, about Christianity, and, and not just Christianity, but all religions, is that you're supposed to give back, right? And very few, very few people do that, regardless of what your religion is. People don't give back usually. This guy is one of those guys who gives back. So, um, it's a good example. It's a good example. Uh, I'm going to try to learn a little bit more about this guy. His name, one more time, is uh, where was it? Ot Obata, I think. Yeah, Obata, Obata. And I don't know all the information. He's 78 years old. Yeah. Um, uh, amazing. Oh yeah, and the other thing was, so the cop said, okay, we'll take it from here, after he found him. And he said, no, I promised I would find the boy and I promised I would deliver him to his parents. So he held on to the boy, wrapped him, wrapped him in a towel and held on, held on to him and carried him to his house. And he was only 560 meters away from his own home. Isn't that amazing? So he's lost, like in his backyard, basically. I mean, for, in America, literally, that's like, I mean, some people, a lot of people have yards that are that, are that big. I think my parents used to, before they retired and, and uh, moved out. But uh, anyway, I'll leave you, you a link to the description. And if you know of any stories that this reminds you of, of, of you have heard of other people who are, I don't know, inspiring like this, let me know. Um, life is short, you know, and... Uh, and it's good, it's good to, oh yeah, it's good to know that some older people, especially in Japan, because in Japan, because of the work culture here, there are so many sad stories of people who work, they gave their whole lives to the company. And when they retire, they, they have nothing to do and basically nothing to live for, you know. Uh, one, of the, one of the saddest stories you ever hear is, um, you know, when I was a company man, I used to get 500 um, New Year's cards, um, Hagaki, we call them. Anyway, New Year's, uh, New Year card, New Year's cards. It's a, it's a, it's a typical Japanese custom to send New Year's cards 
you know, and they arrive on the first. They all arrive on the first, and it kind of shows you how many people are thinking about you. And you send you send those people cards to you exchange cards. But when you retire, you're basically uh, you become a non-entity, and nobody sends you cards anymore. And there's stories of people who used to get 500 cards, and after they retire, they get very very few. And because of this, you see some um, older people finding strange ways to spend their time. One of those ways, which I think is good, but also a little bit depressing, is that you'll see, uh, at least in my neighborhood uh, where I used to live, uh, you would see older people uh, just arranging bicycles. Like, you know, the people put their bicycles in front of the station and then they go, they you know, take the train to work and they'll just be like, a range of fixing them, straightening, straightening them out. And I asked one of the guys once, I said, what do they pay you for this? And he said, um, I get 100, 100 yen an hour, a dollar an hour. But it wasn't really that they needed the work. It just kept them busy. Well, no, I mean, it wasn't that they needed, they needed the money. It's they needed, they needed the work. They needed something to do. And, you know, they say that you stop working, you're dead. You need to do something. You got you to gotta keep active. Um, and I wasn't going to bring this up, but I just found out today that the old man who lives in front of my building, um, in front of my house, I have a house uh, and he has a house, and uh, we have a park between us, a small park, and he would often sit in the park and I would often go to the park with my dog um, and we would chat. It was funny because he was old and he would always forget what the dog was. He was like, what kind of dog is that? Is it a boy or a girl? And he would ask me the same questions every time, but he, was all, he would always share part of his life. He would be out there with a book or some calligraphy, practicing calligraphy out in the park, which is strange. You never see people practicing Japanese calligraphy in the park. And he would show me things. He would bring things. Like, he, like, he didn't know he was going to meet me. We didn't like, make you know, appointments or dates or anything to meet. But he would often have something there to show me. And I haven't seen him for like uh, quite a while, over a year now. And I, you know, I just thought I'm just missing him, and I've got kids now, and I just maybe I just I just we've been you know just not not meeting up by chance. And I saw a construction worker there who I happen to know. Um, uh, ironically, not ironically, but uh, comically, his name is Daichan because he's a daiku, which is a carpenter. I think it's his nickname. That's what they call him, the carpenter. But I asked him, hey, uh, how's Mr. You know, blah, blah, Mr. M? And he said, um, oh, uh, so she's alone now. He didn't say, like, he died. He said, she's, she's by herself, meaning the wife. Um, and, I, you know, and I feel bad that I never got to say, uh, I don't know, I'm like, what are you going to do? I know you're going to die soon, so I don't know. I don't know. Um, I feel like um, there was a... There was a not exactly a friend, but it was a, it was a nice person that I interacted with uh, in my life here in Japan, an old person, and now they're gone. So um, yeah, they, they 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 took their stories, their lives, with them. You know. Uh, so if you know any old people, be sure to milk them for all the stories and the adventures that they have, because everyone's I'm sure they've had interesting things. Uh, everyone's got a story, right? Anyway, um, just got me. Like I said, I was going to mention it doesn't really fit into this uh, narrative at all. But, but um, he was a nice. He was a nice. Very. Oh yeah, he was. A, yeah. Here's a, here's the thing about that guy. He used to walk around our neighborhood early in the morning because I I would do that once in a while. Like just get some exercise. I would go jogging and I would see him walking, and he was really old, like in his eighties. And one day I saw him at a temple, a little shrine. Uh, was it shrine? Uh, yeah, shrine. And um, it had the manji there, you know, which kind of looked like ja the Nazi swastika, but they're not because they're not. You know, they're just the, the, the manji. And he was tidying it up, you know. And I talked to, I, have, I know another woman in the neighborhood, and I talked to her, uh, her about him. She goes, yeah, he, and it was, he was really out of his way. That's what it was. That was interesting to me. It was a good, like, 15-minute walk away. And uh, I talked to a woman there uh, who, need, who lives nearby there, the, the woman who owns a liquor store. And she said, yeah, he often does that. He often will tidy up um, this particular shrine. That was like his, you know, his volunteer work. So people look, look out for each other here. They, and, they, and a lot of people do volunteer work. And, and, I'm, you know, and it isn't just Japan. It's, I'm sure it happens all over the world. But I think, I feel like it happens a little bit more here. So... Yeah, I guess that's something I should probably um, uh, remember as I <laughs> as I continue living in this country. Yeah, anyway, that's all I got for you today. I, there will be links to the description, and uh, next week it'll be a little late. But I found a an interesting. There's some some ANN news articles as well 
news articles. These uh, and you can hear it's I, they're actually pretty. They're really easy for me to understand. So uh, I'll probably uh, do a video about the language and put it up on on Japanese for morons. The Japanese for Morons channel uh, in a few days when I get a chance. I'm still um, recovering from jet lags. I've only been, been back in Japan about five days now. And my kids are getting up at like four in the morning because they're still extremely jet lagged. Um, but at least they're home, right? And they're not lost in the woods. I guess, I, guess I, I can thank my lucky stars for that. And if they do get lost, I'll know who to call. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, guys. More videos coming soon, probably next week, uh, on this channel and the, Gimme and the uh, ASMR channel. I've got great new mics, so you'll see those in action. I'm using one right now. All right, hope the sound was good. Uh, I feel like the lighting could have been better, but, you know, on the fly, and that's the way it goes. Talk to you guys soon.